Gratia plena Dominus Tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis e per nobis, non te Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus Tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus et benedictus. On the 13th of February, 1976, the Mother of God appeared to the Sia Perina in Montichiari, Italy, and said to her, Over the past centuries, I have appeared many times in many different places in the world to bring the message of love. If since my reception in heaven, I have not come down to this earth again and again to gather my children around me and with loving motherly care to deliver my message to them, a large part of the world would have become cold and indifferent to the Lord. Karina Gilly received many messages from the Mother of God during the years 1946 to 1983. When the Mother of God appeared at the Basilica of Montechiari on the 7th of December 1947, she wore a white cloak. The right side being held by a boy and the left side by a girl. On being asked by Perina who the children were, the Mother of God said, Francesco and Yushinta from Fatima, they will stand by you in all your trials and sufferings. Further, the Mother of God said quite clearly, In Fatima, I ask for devotion and consecration to my Immaculate Heart be spread. In Montechiari, I wish it practiced in the monasteries, convents, and religious institutes by priests and consecrated ones. As the Rosa Mystica to be revered in the devotion to my Immaculate Heart, that through my motherly love they may receive bounteous grace. In intimate association with Fatima, on the 31st of August, 1975, the Madonna said to Perina, Wherever one carries the Rosa Mystica as pilgrim Madonna, I will be there and will be accompanied by a great assembly of angels praising the Lord. Today, the pilgrim Madonna is proclaimed thousands of times in the whole world. Many miracles have occurred through her and in many places Rosa Mystica statues and pictures have wept. A special concern of the Mother of God is the renewal of the Church through priests, monasteries, convents and those consecrated. The apparitions have begun in Monte Chiare, a town of about 40,000 inhabitants in the Diocese of Bresica, Italy, 20 kilometers south of Lake Garda. Carina then worked as a nurse. 
in this now empty town hospital. which, from this picture, appears to date from the last century. Four adjoining big rooms, each divided by three partitions, with open connecting passages, served as wards for 20 patients. Standing bed by bed, with only a narrow space between, could to some extent take the sick, who, however, had to tolerate all the noises and smells around them. There were few washing facilities and toilets, and in these circumstances, the nursing staff found it very difficult to carry out their duties of care. The first appearance to Perina was on the 24th of November 1946 in this hospital and she reports With a sorrowful face the beloved Madonna appeared in my small room her arms outstretched I could see three swords piercing her heart With tears in her eyes she said Prayer, sacrifice and penance Father Thaddeus Laux, who had accompanied Perina over the years and had been largely responsible for the publication of the book Rosa Mystica, kept the complete report fixed in his memory. After the first apparition, Perina had to endure much suffering. Throughout the month of May 1947, I had a terrible fight with three dreadful demons. They attacked me continually and filled me with fright and cruelly beat every part of my body. I cried out for help and sought protection and rescue from two nuns who were near me. Next I laid on a bed, then on the floor, but found no protection from the demon's attack who wanted to carry me away. Then I fainted. All at once, I perceived I was carried to a vast, limitless place where I had a dreadful vision. I cried out, how horrible! An unknown voice explained, this is hell. In front of me lay an immense sea of flames. Although I lay some distance from the fire, I thought I would suffocate from the heat and nauseating stink of sulphur. I called out to the Lord and to the beloved Madonna, I cannot bear this! In the middle of this immense sea of flames, I saw large groups of winged devils. And in the middle of the flames, I could see the souls of the damned and could clearly recognize their faces. Totally exhausted by this terrible vision, I continued to cry out, Stop! Stop! God help me! But the voice carried on, Repentance! Repentance is needed to avoid the soul's entry to hell. I called out, We want to repent, but stop! stop! Stop, for my strength is utterly exhausted. At last I was carried out from this dreadful hell. I felt completely relieved and thanked the Lord that he had freed me from all this frightfulness. As Perina, with two nuns, were reciting the Holy Rosary in the hospital chapel on July the 13th, 1947, the third apparition occurred. Perina reports, We were reciting the Holy Rosary when the beloved Madonna appeared, surrounded by a flash of bright light. I begged her, Tell me for heaven's sake, who are you? 
she opened her arms and I could see three roses over her heart white, red, gold she answered I am the mother of Jesus and of you all our Lord sends me to bring a new Marian devotion to all religious orders and institutes I promise you my special protection and a greater blossoming of the spiritual vocations less treacherous callings and greater saintliness to the servants of God I wish that the 13th of each month be called Marian Day this day shall be a day of expiation for the sins of the consecrated souls committed against our Lord. The new devotion to the Virgin Mary shall be called Rosa Mystica. On the 16th of November, 1947, in the Basilica of Montichiari, quite close to the hospital, Perina saw her first apparition. She reports, As I prayed my thanks after Holy Communion in the Basilica, I was suddenly met by a flash of light. As I opened my eyes, I saw the Rosa Mystica in the middle of a great pool of light, standing in the garden where many roses formed a wonderful floral carpet. The loving Madonna came close to me and said, Our Lord, my heavenly son is tired and unable to suffer further the heavy insults mankind is committing against his purity. Already he wanted to send a flood of punishments, but I intercede with him to show mercy. But I recommend prayer and repentance in expiation of these sins. Then she said to me in a commanding tone, As a sign of repentance and purification, make the sign of a cross I threw myself to the ground and made a cross with my tongue on each of the four tiles. Then she gave me a sign to stand up. She stood up from the ground and said, Pour a blessing on this place. Over Italy, the world, the Holy Father, the priests and the consecrated ones. Perino reported the apparition of December the 8th, 1947. At midday, I went into the basilica, already filled with people. They were reciting the Holy Rosary, when suddenly a bright light shone. At the same moment, the Mother of God appeared with folded hands on a white step in a niche of white red and yellow roses. She smiled at me and said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Standing on a lower step, she said, I am Maria the Merciful, Mother of Jesus Christ, the Divine Son of God. Standing a few steps lower, she said, Through my appearance here in Montecari, I wish to be called Rosa Mystica. I also wish that on December 8th, each year at midday, the whole world celebrates the Hour of Grace. With this exercise, the people will obtain numerous spiritual and physical blessings. I asked, what do the steps mean? To which she answered, Please throw over prayers over these towers and shed tears of remorse. We'll have a safe ladder to my motherly heart and will find grace and protection.
Monsignor Abate Francesco Rossi, who for 22 years was priest in the town of Montichiare, reports three witness miracles which occurred during the apparition on the 8th of December 1947. In the Basilica, a six-year-old boy was healed of infantile paralysis. Also healed was a 26-year-old woman who had been ill for 12 years with tuberculosis and for nine years had been unable to speak. The completely healed woman later went into a convent. The third great miracle happened at the time of the apparition, although not in the basilica, but in a private house in the town. There, an abnormally bodily and mentally ill 36-year-old woman was suddenly wholly healed as her sister-in-law spontaneously called out as she recited the rosary. Beloved Madonna, if you really do appear in the Basilica of Montichiare, heal now this poor sufferer. In 1950, town priest Rossi, on the instructions of Perina, ordered a Rosa Mystica to be fashioned by a wood carver in Grudnatal, near Bozen. Completed his work, the woodcarver declared he was overjoyed that until the present he had never been able to carve a Madonna so successfully. Towards the end of the year 1948, she was recalled by the Bishop of Brescia. For 40 long days she had to hold herself in readiness for questioning by many priests and doctors. On the orders of a bishop, Perina had to stay nearly 20 years as a guest in this convent, protected and guided by a father, and despite bodily and spiritual suffering, they were years of very great grace. For more years, until February 1952, Perina had no further apparitions. I was alone in my small room when there shone a bright gleam of light and suddenly I saw a majestic person, tall, bearded, and with long wavy hair reaching to his shoulders. I was almost beside myself, but hardly had he spoken his first word, I was filled with joy and bliss. Daughter, I am Jesus of Nazareth, son of the threefold God. I have chosen that specially favoured place of Montechiari for my mother, Maria, mother of all souls, and the medium of grace and my compassion to reveal herself to you. My mother comes with all the splendour she deserves. Daughter, love me as I love you. Give me your life in love. Think always of my words. Do not fear. My heart is full of love for your soul. As he left me, I saw in his place a glowing cross. Perino reports on the second apparition of Christ on the 20th of February 1953. At three o'clock in the afternoon I was praying in my room the way of the cross and a vision of the crucified. My daughter, I love you very much and I give you my mother's love to be able to love me. Show yourself worthy of this grace. Do you know, daughter, why I wished my mother, Maria, at her apparition in Montechiari to reveal her title as Rosa Mystica, Maria the Merciful? Rosa is to mean body. Mystica is to mean mystical or 
mystical body of the church through which my mother is Maria, the merciful, since I have given her all power to grant mercy. Through her motherly love, you can receive everything from me. Therefore, I sent my mother to Montechiari to make known to mankind the term mystical body and as a medium of reconciliation with me. Truly, this will happen, daughter. Love me always as you love me at this In a later message, the Mother of God said to Perina, Perina, pray and help that there will be much prayer, so that the compassion of the Lord flows over those in great danger. On the 27th of February, 1966, I was again praying in my little room, in the convent of the sisters in Monte Chiari, when there appeared the beloved Madonna, Rosa Mystica. She was sad and said to me, Perina, on 12th, 14th and 16th of April, after Easter, there is to be a penance, penance procession from the little chapel in Fontenelle, and the call for repentance is to be made known everywhere. There will be days of miracle at the spring. From this Sunday on, the sick are to be brought here. You are to begin by giving them a cup of water and then to wash their wounds. This will be your apostolic mission. You should not now conceal anything and no longer live in seclusion. Fontenelle is a village about four kilometers distance from Monte Chiari and consists only of a few houses. In this village is situated the place of grace with the great spring, the little chapel, and here stands the tall cross. Nearby, only 15 minutes walk away, at a magnificent estate belonging to the Count Giorgio of Montichiare, Perina was born and spent some years of her childhood here. Rina wrote in her diary, I was the first of three children, and as the first, I could share in the joy, happiness, and tenderness of my parents. August the 3rd, 1911, was the start of my earthly life. I was baptized on August the 5th. I was consecrated by my mama to the Madonna from Snow, under whose motherly protection I would be kept white and pure. There was nothing unusual in the childhood of Perina. Despite poverty, she experienced happy years in the circle of her family with the other two children. The father, Pancratio Gili, was an agricultural worker until he was called up to serve as a soldier in the First World War. The mother brought her children up in poverty as God-fearing. Karina suffered her first great misfortune when she was seven years old, when her father returned home ill and shortly afterwards died. From 1918 to 1922, Perina lived in the orphanage of the Sisters of Mercy, where, at eight years of age, she received her first Holy Communion. At 11 years of age, she had to return home. Out of concern for her children, the mother had remarried and had given birth to further children who needed the care of the older sister. When Perina was 12, the family's poverty and the bare walls of their dwelling forced them to move in with another family 
where they had to live in small, cramped rooms. The house stood directly on the present route of the procession, near the little bridge, where the Mother of God wished it to turn. Karina had only a few minutes walk to the spring, where she often played with the other children. Fontanelle is a water grotto reached by old stone steps. On the 27th of February 1966, the Mother of God gave notice she would appear on White Sunday in Fontanelle. The diocesan bishop of Brescia was informed of the announced apparition. He ordered Perina to maintain strict silence about it. On White Sunday, 17th of April, 1966, Perina and her friend Lucia prayed on the way above the grotto and recited the rosary. After the Angelus had sounded, the beloved Mother of God appeared and said, My heavenly Son Jesus is full of love and has sent me here to give this spring miraculous healing powers. As a sign of expiation, bend down now, stay kneeling, and once more kiss the step. Karina went backwards down the steps. The Mother of God followed her, and for the ter third time said, Now kiss the step again, and have a cross erected here. The sick and all my children should first ask forgiveness from my heavenly Son. Lovingly kiss the cross, and then drink from the water. The Mother of God stood near to the Spring of Grace, and said, Washed in the water of grace, their souls will be washed pure, and again worthy of grace. The Mother of God bent down and touched the spring in two places. On Corpus Christi, the 9th of June 1966, there were about a hundred persons assembled at the spring. Perina arrived at three o'clock and the, bade the pilgrims to recite the Holy Rosary. As they recited the fourth secret, she called out, Look up to heaven! The beloved Heavenly Mother is here. Above the spring, where now stands this little chapel, the Mother of God appeared in full beauty and majesty and lowered herself to touch with her feet the ripening ears of corn in the nearby field. Following the direction of Perina's look, those present were able to see the wheat ears sway as the Mother of God touched them with her feet. To Purina, she said, Today, my heavenly son, Jesus Christ, has sent me here. I wish many wafers to be made from this wheat and sent to Rome, and should reach Fatima the 13th of October. The wish of the Mother of God was fulfilled. Part of the milled wheat was received by the Holy Father in Rome, and he personally blessed it. A further part reached Fatima, the rest went to the parishes in Rome and others who had asked for it. A large quantity of wafers were baked from the wheat for the Holy Penitential Communion, especially in Fatima. In a cloister we saw how these wafers are baked. Dough was produced from the finest wheat flour mixed with water and put into an electrically heated baking tin. and joined to a second baking tin. After a short time, the dough is baked through and removed. Large and small wafers, as needed, are available from the finished baked slice. In an adjoining room were two pastry form punching machines. The large wafers were cut out on one machine
and the small wafers cut out on the other. and collected and counted before dispatch. For the celebration of the penitential communion, not only wafers, but also little rolls were baked by a baker, whose 16-year-old daughter had been healed through the Fontenelle Water of Grace, and today is a nun. And in gratitude for her miraculous deliverance, bakes on the 13th of October each year these small rolls, as desired by the beloved Mother of God, to be an act of charity for distribution to the pilgrims. Monsignor Francesco Rossi had this chapel erected. He caused this statue to be carved and stood here. On the 26th of April, 1976, in the sky above Fontenelle, a great cross was visible. Full of wonder, Perina asked the Madonna, What means this cross? came the reply, a determined assault. Next to the chapel is to erect the great cross. A glance to this cross shall give everyone the light of faith and love. United with my heavenly Son, Jesus Christ, my heart remains open and my arms outstretched. Come, my children, I have determined the source of forgiveness and love. This cross was donated by a group of pilgrims from Essen and consecrated on the 13th of October 1976 in the presence of many thousands of pilgrims. On April the 17th, 1966, the Mother of God said to Pierina, the faithful, they should first go to the church and in Holy Communion pray to my Heavenly Son. They are to thank the Lord who is so bountiful and merciful, so much love and grace given to Montefiani. Today we celebrated a holy mass as the Mother of God ordered. Qui compassioni volontarie traderetu, accepit panem, e gratia sagens fregit, dedicvi discipuli suis dissens, accipere manducate es hoc omnes, hoc est enim corpus meum, quo provovis traderetu. And, as the Mother of God wished, we received Holy Communion, kneeling and taken with the mouth. In November 1974, the Madonna said to Perina, I go now as a pilgrim, as a beggar, as a missionary throughout the world, in the company of choirs of holy angels. Wherever I am received with love and faith, I will grant bounteous grace. After the service, at the wish of the Mother of God, began the penitence procession. Often in such a place of pilgrimage, we have seen through the camera a remarkable event. Et 
In order to show details of the processions in various months, those in the months June to October 2000 are collected together. These statues, representative of many other Madonnas, are consecrated here and are intended for dispatch to many countries. Qui in nobis confirmatsbem, 
After the procession, prayers will be offered in each of the languages of the pilgrims present. Te agradecemos tu amor infinito que te impulsó a sufrir tantos y tan crueles dolores para la expiación de nuestros pecados. With the wound in the left hand, my most loving, crucified Lord Jesus, humbly prostrate, I adore with Mary, all angels and saints in heaven, the most sacred wound in thy left hand, and ask of thee grace for all sinners and for the dying. In more intense amigos, there is a of a congregation kao i s ove podočašniške skupine mogu nastati mnoge svete duše. Mein liebevolster gekreuzigter Herr Jezus, demit niedergeworfen, bin ich an mit Maria, mit allen Engeln und Heiligen des Himmels die heiligen Wunde deiner heiligen Seite und bitte dich, alle diejenigen, die sich an meine Gebete empfohlen haben, zu segnen und zu erhören. Zweite Jungfrau, bitte für uns, gekreuzigt der Herr Jesus, bekräftige diese Gebete durch die Verdienste deines Leidens, gib mir Heiligkeit und Leben, im Augenblicke des Todes aber die Gnade, die Heiligen und der Menschen zu empfangen und endlich die ewige Seligkeit. Amen. Nun bitten wir unsere beiden Priester um den Segen mit der Rosa mit der Kern. Mit der Kleinen und der Großen Stadt. Benedikas Wort, et Omnipotens Deus, Vater, et Spiritus, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Each pilgrim who comes here for the first time consecrates himself to our Rosa Mystica with the words, Mother, take me into thy service. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Secum, benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris. All pilgrims then go from the little chapel to the big chapel with the spring. These statues again receive a special consecration at the Spring of Grace as representative of all others. In her message, of the 9th of June 1966, the beloved Mother of God wished a statue to face the spring and have a roof placed over the place of devotion. On the steps to the spring, where the Madonna promised on the 17th of April 1966 a special grace, 
the chosen statues undergo a special consecration. In her message of the 13th of May 1966, the Mother of God wished that a comfortable basin be built in which the sick could immerse themselves.
This votive tablet attests the many healings which have occurred. Perina saw her last apparition. On the 6th of August 1966, the Feast of the Transfiguration of Christ, about 200 persons present were reciting the Holy Rosary at Perina's instigation. At the fourth mystery, Perina called out, The Mother of God is here. The Mother of God said to Perina, My Heavenly Son has again sent me here in order to request a World League of Penitential Communion, and this is to be done on October 13th. This day of penitential communion should be celebrated throughout the world and repeated every year. It is an act of love and gratitude to the Lord, Lord's children. Of love and gratitude to the Lord's children. The Mother of God also wished the way of the cross to be prayed. Pater Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tui moleribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. That water from the spring brings many blessings to the home. Before we left Fontenelle, the water was blessed. et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. After 20 years as helper in a nunnery without any pay, Perina lived in this house in Monte Chiare, which was given by an anonymous patron. Mr. Merin visits Perina's sister, Angela, who administers the house with her daughter, Perina. This is the sister of Perina, Angela. With her dear daughter, Perina. Today it is said, she learned in the Marian school to carry with Jesus her cross in quiet and unending sacrificial readiness so that the Holy Church became more protective in all its branches, especially in the souls of the consecrated, the priests and the persons of the orders. This prayer notice was published in Montechiare, Italy. Perina Gili, born 3rd of August 1911, died 12th of January 1991. Each month we visit Perina's grave and pray three Ave Marias and Salve Regina. I got to know Perina in the spring of 1977. She was a very kind person. For me, this meeting was of great significance. Perina said, You are an apostle of the Rosa Mystica. I thought, how could she imagine this to be? So far, I had no rightful relationship to her. Only later, Mr. Mehring came to know his mission through Peter Laux. Perina's home, as was also here in the kitchen, comfortably arranged, whereby the Mother of God, Jesus, 
and St. Joseph were always present. The kitchen had a direct connection to the oratorio, Perina's little chapel, from which the prayers of the pilgrims in all the rooms could be heard. The living room was simply furnished, and Perina's veneration of our Holy Father, Pope John Paul, was manifest. From a small entrance hall, we stepped into the bedroom and were immediately struck by the sight of a remarkable picture of our Rosa Mystica. The whole property is today a memorial place to Perina and her apparitions and is open to the public. On the orders of the Episcopal Professor, Perina, after her last apparition on the 6th of August 1966, was not allowed any further visits to Fontanelle. The beloved Mother of God, however, is not bound by a ban of a mortal on any place. Perina reported further apparitions, including the following. The Mother of God appeared in my little chapel at midday on October the 12th, 1968. Smiling, she said, My daughter, have courage. Nothing in my motherly love should alarm you. Absolutely nothing. I am the Heavenly Mother. I am always with you and with all my children that love me. The apparition of the 19th of May 1970 is of far-reaching importance. The Madonna appeared, as always, in her white mantle with the three roses over her heart on her right arm, as usual, she carried a great rosary on which was hung a medal instead of a cross. The obverse of the medal showed Maria with folded hands standing on a step. Over her head, three roses. On the edge is the inscription, Rosa Mystica. On the reverse appears a round domed church with three great doors. On the edge, the inscription, Maria Mater Ecclesia, which means Maria, Mother of the Church. Pure. I wish a medal to be made as I show. To those of my children who carry it over their hearts, I promise my motherly protection full of grace. At this time, people are destroying the veneration and love to me. But by bearing the medal of my motherly love, it will be a sign that my children will always have me with them. The mother of God, the mother of mankind. Blessing of the Lord and my love will be always with the children who seek refuge in me. At the apparition on the 8th of September 1974, among other things, the Mother of God said to Perina, I have spoken to the hearts of my beloved children and to be a new messenger of my love and to give the message of neighbourly love. At that time, the Heavenly Mother was not immediately understood, but soon it was clear that she meant the so-called Pilgrim Madonnas. From Perina's description, how she had seen our loving Rosa Mystica, Father Thaddeus Laux ordered the carver Peratona in Gurudnatal many examples of a statue bearing three roses on the breast. These were then given to monasteries and families where they were gratefully received. At the apparition on the 6th of February 1976, Perina asked, Dear Madonna, should the matter of the pilgrim Madonnas proceed? Oh yes, wherever I arrive with these pilgrim Madonnas, I will bring up the bountiful grace of the Lord. Carry on spreading the message of light and love 
which I revealed in Montecchiari. In particular, it is of value to the consecrated souls, especially my loving sons, the priests. For health reasons, Peter Lauchs was unable to carry out the wish of the Mother of God to distribute the pilgrim Madonnas as widely as she had wished. At the right time, Horst Mering came along to undertake this function. At first, Father Lauchs did not want to give me a statue. And then afterwards, he changed his mind and gave me a carved wooden Madonna everything built upon it. Day and night I travelled a whole year with this Madonna, prayed with others, so that from then on they had a prayer a year long. That must have had some good effect. In the meantime, and in the present, it has come about that the statue sheds bloody tears, normal salty tears, that give oil in great grace and meanwhile gives mineral oil in all countries. Everywhere there are statues. In Germany, paper pictures of the Rosa Mystica that exude oil, shed tears. We can only be amazed at these happenings.